All right, everyone, it's Dr. Eric, the fitness physician here. I've got another uh, excellent episode for the Relentless Vitality Podcast. I've got an awesome guest I'm excited to talk to. Mr. Greg, is it McKittrick? Did I say it right? And uh, he's going to talk to us about various things, but the main topic has to do with nitric oxide, uh, men's health, heart health, women's health, a little bit of everything. And um, we're going to talk about the importance of nitric oxide. Uh, what is it? How does it work? How do we make that better for improving our performance? Um everywhere, uh, mentally, physically, et cetera. So Greg, welcome, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Awesome, man. So we'll uh, just, I guess, uh, I know you just gave me a little bit, but if you want to give our listeners just a, a quick rundown of you and uh, Berkeley and who else you work for, and probably just the stuff you just told me, but anything else you want to throw in there and uh, we'll so, go from there. Yeah, my background, I've been a pharmacist for over 30 years. Uh, I have worked with a strong focus on men's health, sexual function, dysfunction, uh, over the last decade. Currently, I am a director of urology, OBGYN, and hormone control for the Revelation Pharmacore, which it's a, it's a conglomerate of compounding pharmacies around the country. Um, I also am on the scientific advisory for Berkeley Health Nitric Oxide, and I am a educator and health coach for the BHRT Training Academy, which is a facility that actually instructs doctors uh, how to implore the the hormones and therapy into their their practices i actually wrote and designed the men's health program for them so in a nutshell that's me awesome awesome all right good well let's get into it man let's uh let's talk about uh health and performance optimization we'll get into sexual health too of course but nitric oxide let's talk about i guess that for those people that maybe don't know like maybe the basics of it because a lot of people here have uh, nitric oxide, whether it's, you know, eat your vegetables, or you can say, of course, in the, you know, the, the gyms, of course, you know, the bros have been talking about, you know, nitric oxide boosters forever, but there's good ones and bad ones. Right. So we're going to talk about how to do it the right way. Right. So let's talk about like, what is it? How do we get it? Like, and, and let's uh, talk about why it's so darn important. So let's, let's kind of start at the beginning, you know, when we're young, meaning teens, twenties, thirties, our bodies produce a lot of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is our na natural vasodilator. Uh, so it maintains uh, vascular health, cardiac health, helps with cognitive function, immune function, respiratory function, uh, improves glucose metabolism, basically any metabolic function in the body that relies on blood flow. Uh, just like most things, as we age, the body just slows in production, just like with hormone production, as we're aging, that drops off. Well, nitric oxide production does as well. So by the age of 40, natural nitric oxide production is typically down to about 50%. By the age of 60, it's down to about 15%. So if you think in terms of, you know, this really is the, the particle, this is the molecule that is maintaining our circulatory function, maintaining vasodilation, as this is going away, Think of what's happening to the body and, and, you know, physiologically think, hey, when do we start seeing problems with, with vascular occlusion? When do we start seeing problems with neuropathy, with cardiac function? You know, all of these play a role and it's all dependent on the, this blood flow. So while we are aging, this is dropping off and that has a significant effect on overall health, certainly has an effect on sexual function. Um, Again, to kind of restate maybe the obvious, but you know, when we're young and you're sexually aroused, there's a hormonal response that triggers the endothelial tissue in the body to release nitric oxide. Again, this is our vasodilator. So you get aroused, blood flow, and that increases sexual function for both men and women. Think in terms of when sexual function starts to become more of a challenge. You know, for, for most of my patients, it's late 40s, getting into the 50s. Well, this is the same time that we're starting to see the significant drop off in natural nitric oxide production. So it's not surprising that, you know, a guy in early 50s or late 40s is knocking on the doctor's door saying, doc, you know, things aren't going quite the same way they used to. I need a little help downstairs. So again, this is where all of the new EV meds come into play. Yep. Uh, a big part of it is just because the body is not producing the natural vasodilator any longer. And you mentioned it and, and, you know, there are a ton of great nitric oxide boosters out there and you go to GNC, you go up to your gym, you know, Knox boost or NO boost or NO pump, 
all of these things are great. Um, you know, most of them are amino acid based. Yep. So lots of L-arginine, L-citrulline, pycnogenol. Um, and, and those are wonderful if you are under 40. The problem is all of those have to go through conversion to become systemic nitric oxide. There is a process, it's called nitric oxide synthase. Well, guess what breaks down about the same time the body starts to really cut back on natural production, that pathway. That means that we are feeding L-arginine into the system and the system no longer has that capacity to efficiently convert it into systemic nitric oxide. It builds up. It actually can, can form a, a real source of oxidative stress in the body. The difference is using, and, and you mentioned it, you know, you can do it through diet. So, you know, I tell all of my patients, hey, you know, if you go to a real healthy green diet, get away from the sad diet, which most Americans fall into these days, you know, eat spinach, beets, arugula, cucumbers, all those good healthy greens. And that stuff's super rich in nitrates. And that's a great way to get it. The problem is most of us just don't follow that kind of diet. Um, I was a big advocate of nitric oxide products for years prior to meeting the folks from Berkeley Life. Uh, Berkeley Life was at a metabolic health conference that I attended back probably six years ago. And they had their product there and they had their patented saliva test strips with them, mm -hmm. which if you've seen them, they're really, really cool because it gives you about a 10 second diagnostic on what your systemic nitric oxide levels are. Yeah, I've used them. They're great. And, and again, it's super easy for patients. It's something they can really understand. Well, they were there promoting nitric oxide for cardiac function, which, you know, over 20 years ago, there was a Nobel prize awarded to the research that was done on nitric oxide relating to cardiac function. So this is a natural fit. Well, a lot of folks don't know this, but cardiac function and erectile function are very, very closely related. In fact, you know, we call erectile function the canary in the coal mine for heart disease, right. simply because a lot of times it's the first indicator that you're starting to have a problem. Well, when I met them and started talking with them about the differences in their nitric oxide product, number one, it is not an amino acid based product. It is essentially equivalent to eating about five ounces of fresh spinach by taking two capsules. Uh, the ingredients are beetroot and potassium nitrates, vitamin C, uh, some auxiliary vitamins in there as well. But within 90 minutes, it gives this palpable rise in systemic nitric oxide. It doesn't go through a conversion process. So it doesn't matter if you're 20 years old or 80 years old. This product is as effective as, again, just really being on this super healthy diet, a rigorous healthy diet. Um, and because of that, I saw a direct link, especially into my patients. I work with a ton of these patients that, that guys suffering with ED, and they're always looking for what's, what's, the, what's the magic bullet that I can take? What can I do to fix this? Well, you know, a lot of these guys are either using medicines, PDE5s, Mm -hmm. like Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, Stendra. Well, you know, the basics of those medications is they really maximize that systemic nitric oxide so that there is a reservoir of nitric oxide to release when you become aroused. If there's no natural nitric oxide in the body or very little, you're really compromising the effectiveness of those medications. Therefore, I saw this great link and that was kind of my way of jumping two feet right into the pool with Berkeley life, because I just saw it as a perfect fit for my patients. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, I think you hit on a great point there about the diet, because I I've done a few, you know, videos in the past talking about that too, because there's two pathways, right? There's the, and maybe you could touch on this too, the whole nitrate to nitrate conversion with foods and then the internal kind of process, which is where some of the supplements and things come in too. But as you mentioned, it's kind of hard to get enough of the good stuff, right? Uh, you know, beets and arugula and, you know, you can, and it's probably going to help, but it may <laughs> probably not enough unless they're eating a ton of it. Well, and, and again, you know, most, most patients, they want the easy out, unfortunately, yeah. you know, that that's the way to go. 
And if you can take a couple of capsules a day instead of following a rigorous diet, you know. Yeah, and, and some people just don't have the right um, microbiome in their mouth to break down those products or they have some digestive issues or heaven forbid you're taking, everybody's taking like a proton pump inhibitor or some other stuff and they're just not digesting it in the first place. So even if you're eating all these foods, it may or may, it might not be enough if you can't break it down and digest it, you know, so um and you know i've uh what's in terms of like the products too you know I, I you know i've looked at a lot of them as well there's a few other ones out there that are pretty good but some i guess maybe you could touch on the compared to some of the other ones out there like duration of action um you know timing etc you know taking the both at the same time versus splitting them up throughout the day how long do they last etc compared to some of the other products out there sure um you know, one of the, the products that's very commonly compared with, with Berkeley Life simply because similarities in, in how it's formulated, a product called Neo 40. Now that's a, well, it's a tablet dissolves on the tongue. So it is effective. It's also really expensive. Um, yeah. And it has a shorter duration. The Berkeley Life product, again, you know, it, it's, is it a 24 hour a day action? No, you, you will metabolize through it over the course of the day. So I'm a huge advocate with patients in terms of really timing the dosage of the supplement based on your activity level throughout the day. Now, I have a lot of patients that will actually take it two in the morning, two in the evening, just because they want added boost when they want demand. Um, it is not recommended to take this in a split dose. It's, it's two capsules because... That really is what you need to achieve the optimal level in the system. If you break that and take one capsule in the morning, one capsule in the evening, you will benefit, but you'll never really hit that optimal level to get the body's nitric oxide levels up the way you want them to. Um, I very frequently use this. I mean, I'll go to conferences, I'll go to clinics, and I'll bring Berkeley Life products with me, the test strips and the product. And I'll basically kind of walk through our own little experiment where I'll test everybody in the office, see what their levels are, give them a couple of capsules to take. And then I have them go through the course of the day and into the next day, retesting themselves. Test about two hours after that initial two capsule dose, test about six hours after that, six hours again, and then the next morning. Based off of what their baseline level was, they are still going to be significantly higher. Now, again, that next morning level will not be the same as the, the level two hours after their dose, but it's still better than when they started. And then as they do this on a regular basis, again, it, it really has that, that total systemic effect. So you're seeing like a good duration of about 12 hours, roughly? Give oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, certainly. Or more. Okay, awesome. That's excellent. Yeah, and that, was, that was, kind of leads into my next question too about you know timing because obviously... You know, some people will do um, products like these or even like, Cial you know, it's like the PDE5 for performance, really, like like a, almost like a pre-workout, you know, to yep. uh, for so maybe you could touch on a little bit about uh, performance in the gym or on the track, you know, et cetera, the court, you know, for type of, this type of thing, too. And again, this is where I think this really shines. A lot of this I came by anecdotally, simply because I had such a wide variety of patients everything from young guys who really were using this for improved athletic performance, improved endurance to skiers who used it because it actually helped uh, stave off the problems of altitude sickness. Hmm. Uh, cyclists who, you know, everybody knows Lance Armstrong. Well, I've got guys who are competitive cyclists who come in here and, you know, these are the guys who are walking around. They've got a, a pulse oximeter on their finger when they walk in the door to talk to me just to show me the difference yeah <laughs> uh, in terms of effect again i try to really tailor the dosage with my patients based on what they have as a normal routine if they are using this for a workout you know if they're working out after work then i try to stage their dose later in the day there's no sense in taking it at seven o'clock in the morning when it's going to metabolize out during the course of the day and then expect you're going to have that full pump at five or six o'clock in the evening. Right. By the same token, if it's for sexual function, 
don't take it at seven o'clock in the morning if you have sexual activity typically only at nine o'clock at night right and if you're a morning guy great if you're a nooner super if not you know shift that dose right. or at least shift it on a day when you really want the on-demand response are there any um any limitations or con now I'm saying I don't want to say contraindication of course because there really isn't any but in terms of anything that would be going on metabolically that would uh, diminish its effectiveness if there's some type of inflammatory process or something in the diet or something that you would need to overcome? Um, Biggest thing, and, and I am going to use the word contraindication or at least caution because there are some, and again, I'm a pharmacist, so I'm going to throw out the, the problems that can come up and, you know, hopefully we don't have a whole lot of patients that are in this pool, but there always are some. You know, folks who are on blood thinners like Coumadin, mm -hmm. Warfarin, um, that is a medication, obviously the blood thinner, but it also, it works in a very specific therapeutic window. The levels have to be precise. You're really looking to get uh, the tests correct, PT, PTT times INRs. If we significantly increase blood flow, we have to do one of two things. We either have to alter the dose of the Coumadin basically meaning tone it down mm -hmm. or not use that product for the patient. In general, we have very few restrictions. You know, mostly it's these medications that have these super, super tight therapeutic windows. If someone's had an organ transplant, mm. someone's on Coumadin, these are the big ones that we really look at. Uh, will it affect blood pressure? Yeah. It's probably going to knock a few points off your blood pressure sure. will it, or will it affect blood glucose. I have so many patients, guys who have started on this nitric oxide, the Berkeley Life product for erectile function. And I get a phone call a month later and like, this stuff's great. It, it dropped my morning blood sugar by 25 points. Interesting. If they can eat greens, unless they are on a green restricted diet, which typically, again, that's that's got to do with some kind of a clotting situation or, again, trying to maintain specific blood flow. If they can eat greens, they can take this product. If they can eat spinach, they can take this product. Right. And I've had, and maybe you could speak to this too about combining it, but I know some people have, you know, come to me already on a PD-5, you know, they're already taking Cialis or Viagra when they're asking for it, and maybe I'll put them on it. But oftentimes I've found that, and you know, as you mentioned, if they don't have enough nitric oxide in the first place, it might be why it's not working. Or I'm going to say, hey, doc, this is not working anymore. Hey, I'd like to try this, but it's not working as well as you used to. That might be one of the first things I do is give them something like this because they, they work obviously well together. So, um, you know, so, and exactly. So, you know, again, I mentioned, you know, the, the guy who shows up at the doctor's office says, doc, I'm not performing the way I used to, you know, Viagra is one of the most commonly prescribed erectile dysfunction drugs on the market. So doctor gives him a prescription for Viagra. Okay. Viagra works for about two thirds of men. What most folks don't know is Viagra typically will only work for about five years. Now think of this in terms of this pathway that we've discussed. By the time they're starting on it, they are already on that depleted path with their, their systemic nitric oxide, with their nitric oxide production. Five years later, that pathway doesn't shut down, man. It continues. It's rolling downhill. Right. So by the time they get to that point, well, guess what? You know, there's a thing, I, I always use a simple analogy. If you're out there pulling the cord on your lawnmower and it's just sputtering and sputtering and sputtering and you've never checked to see if there's any gas in the tank, and that, that's an exercise in futility. Yep. This is the same thing. If there's no gas in the tank, you you again, you're using Viagra, you're using Cialis, you're using these medications to really maximize that store of nitric oxide in the system so it's there to release when you need it. I saw so many guys, and, and again, I work with a lot of different erectile medications, a lot of uh, guys, once they have kind of gotten to the point where medicines like Viagra and Cialis and those don't work anymore, they start to rely on what's called a penile injection, which it's actually injecting vasodilators into the penis to achieve an erection. Once I brought the Berkeley Life product in, we actually had this huge demand for Cialis and Viagra again, because we had guys who had been dependent on injections. Now we're getting function again, using those PDE5s that had previously failed. And 
that was the, the greatest testament I had in terms of the really the viability of this and the effectiveness of this product. That's all. Yeah, no, no, that's amazing. And, and that's a question that comes up a lot too, is right. You know, when it, gosh, you know, doc, it's not, it's not working anymore like it used to, or, and it can wear off. Some people can take it for years and years, no problem. Other people not. But as you mentioned, that's probably one of the main reasons they're just running out of, they're running out of fuel to that. It works on, you know, you got to have the fuel to keep it around longer, you know, so you got to do both. <laughs> exactly. um, what about in terms of like, uh, you know, we touched on gym performance too, right? Which is important and, and uh, any, you know, in terms of studies and any background and too, I think obviously working in the cognitive space too, in terms of, you know, mental performance, I think, you know, obviously blood flow is key, right? So I'm sure there's a lot of studies out there supporting its benefit for just work, like mental work, right? Cognitive capacity, men memory, and things of that nature. So cognitive capacity, absolutely. But take that a step further, Alzheimer's patients. Mm -hmm. If we can really significantly improve cognitive function, blood flow, we have a huge impact on this whole population of patients. Gym performance, obviously, we're, we're basically, you know, getting blood throughout the whole body, supporting the heart, getting the pump that guys want in the gym. Endurance. Again, I mentioned the cyclists. The ability to adapt to lower oxygen levels simply because you have the capacity to carry and really efficiently use the oxygen that's available. So again, this goes back to, to high altitude skiers. I, I have patients that come in who, you know, they tell me these stories every year they, they travel They're They're going out to Colorado to ski with their family. And every year they are on the, on the lodge couch with altitude sickness after half of a day. Right. They start on this product and the next thing you know, not only are they not getting altitude sickness, but all the aches, the neuropathy, the, the pains and everything from the depletion of oxygen through the system, that goes away too. So there's a plethora of benefits to this for the active folks. Um, and again, I work a lot with sexual function for men and women. Um, and we haven't even touched on, on the female side of this, but right. huge benefits as well. Well, I think it's cool what you mentioned, the altitude, the t altitude aspect. That's one thing I had not thought of uh, because I like to ski too. I'm thinking, I mean, I've never really had any problems with altitude illness, but I know a lot of people that have, but in terms of endurance, you know, you, how you feel, you're always pretty gassed, you know, going down the runs, you know, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to bring some with me next, <laughs> next time for sure. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, but yeah, let's, and you, you read my mind. So that was my next thing was just to talk about uh, women because obviously they, same thing, you know, sexual health, physical health, working out, et cetera. Um, anything nuanced or different uh, in the in the female space? So very interesting. And I was at a, a conference this past Saturday. I was speaking to a bunch of folks from different urology practices. And, you know, we spend a lot of time focused on men's sexual function. Medicines like Viagra, Cialis, all of these are out there and they sell so well because there's such a demand for it. And one of the things that I really try to uh, impress upon practitioners is, hey, female, male, yeah, there are some anatomical differences, obviously, but the plumbing and the vascular bed, all of that is the same. Right. So for your female patient, one of the things that you note as the aging uh, process continues, you're, you're starting to have a depletion in hormone levels especially you get to perimenopausal, postmenopausal, post hysterectomy women. But what also happens is you're losing that nitric oxide. So not only are you having depletion in hormones, which causes change in tissues, causes thinning of the vaginal wall, um, even such things as clitoral atrophy in patients, but you're also losing the blood flow that maintains blood perfusion to those tissues. If you don't have blood per perfusion, if you don't have blood engorgement, then you lose the sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So these same patients, if we boost that nitric oxide level, and it can be coupled with, with good support of hormone therapy as well, but we can restore that natural function. So you have increased blood flow, increased sensitivity, increased clitoral engorgement, increased orgasmic capacity. Another aspect of the nitric oxide, it actually boosts the production of oxytocin. Hmm. So 
oxytocin, they call it the cuddle drug or the cuddle mm -hmm. hormone. Um, very important for sexual function, for orgasmic function. So right. though, again, if we support healthy levels of not only nitric oxide for the blood flow, but the oxytocin, we really have this ability to impact the, the capacity for sexual enjoyment, for, for quality of life, better orgasmic function. Again, just, just over and over. I, I know I, I repeat these things, but this is so important. My patients see this and, and, you know, this is the, the ball field that I work in and, you know, every day I have the same complaints where, where people come in and, you know, for women, intercourse is painful. They have no pleasure from it. Uh, they get vaginal tears simply because the, the tissue has thinned out so much due to lack of blood perfusion. There's so many ways that we can affect this, whether again, we're coupling things like the nitric oxide with good hormone therapy, mm -hmm. uh, to really restore that tissue. So, you know, from that aspect, it's, it's a huge benefit for both the female population and the male. Now that's awesome. I think my women need to hear that for sure. Cause most people think, Oh, it's just for the guys. No, it's for both for sure. I tell, I talk about that quite a bit. So I appreciate that. And it's uh, very interesting about the oxytocin. That was one thing I was not aware of. So that's huge. Um, that's one thing I always try to, to talk to people about is boosting your oxytocin levels. It's, I think it's the forgotten hormone. <laughs> so, well, and, and, you know, we use it for a lot of patients, whether it's anorgasmia or delayed orgasm, we will incorporate uh, uh, the oxytocin, whether it's a sublingual version or a nasal spray, whatever the case, along with our therapies, if we can do that in a more natural way, yep. with, or, again, I'm all about spontaneous function. Certainly we have patients where, you know, you really have to almost plan out your activity because you need to do so many steps to get ready for sexual activity. You're at a point in your life where, well, you know, looking at your clock, looking at the calendar going, well, it's Friday and it's seven o'clock at night. So I'm hoping by nine o'clock, there's going to be something going on. I better start getting ready. Man, if we can start to really get a spontaneous function return, that just really increases the, the intimacy in the relationship because all of those little hurdles that we fight, man, those, those create these roadblocks to intimacy and they create bigger than that. Even it's the roadblock between the ears, because once we start to lose that confidence, you know, that psychological aspect, it has such a huge role in just our ability to enjoy sex, to be intimate with our partner once you start doubting your ability and you start to lose that confidence, men and women both, you know, we really slide down this slope that takes us away from intimacy. It takes us away from our partner. It, it leads to bad things. It leads to, you know, problems in relationships, problems in self-esteem. So there's so many aspects of this. It's so layered. And I think that we have the ability to really affect both of our patients in, in, in really a physical, a psychological and an emotional way. No, that's awesome. That's very well said. And you're absolutely right. It's like the layers of the onion, you know, a lot of people think of it's just a physical, but it, it affects people emotionally and mentally and in many, many ways. And then it, it's a dynamic, it affects one affects both. And then it could just spiral unless you correct it quickly. So I'm glad you mentioned that. So very, very important. Very, very important. I would think too, that there'd be a lot of uh, benefits too, with, you know, just in terms of like, you know, the healing process in general, not just thinking like things like wounds, but, you know, people have nagging injuries or chronic injuries or even acute injuries is obviously, again, getting that blood flow improved to uh, reduce the inflammation, get those inflammatory, you know, get the, get the blood in there, get all those, those healing cells, et cetera, cytokines in there and getting it, getting flushing the area and getting it uh, healed up. I would think that'd be another benefit too. Yeah, absolutely. If you can increase circulatory function, healing is going to improve uh, soft tissue, especially, mm -hmm. A lot of the things that we see are kind of a little bit deeper dive getting into where you have patients with significant neuropathies, DVTs. Yeah. Well, you know, what's the key? The key is getting blood flow back into that tissue. Right. So if we can restore good, healthy blood flow, you know, you're doing more. And again, you think in terms of, okay, we're going to get some relief from discomfort. Well, guess what? When we're looking at a lot of these patients, especially you get into the diabetic population. 
Yeah. First step is the neuropathy. The next step is tissue necrosis. You get to where these patients really start to have life-changing events due to the fact that their circulatory function, their blood vessels have decayed and atrophied so badly. You, you get into the real cases of fibrotic tissue and there, there's just no recovery once you let it get to that point. So it's so important when these telltale signs start popping up, be proactive, you know, get into this, really address it early and, and you're going to sustain life, not just improve it. You're going to sustain life for your patients. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Like you said, get to it before it gets to that point, because once it's there, it's irreversible. You don't want right. to find this. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you about, too, and I just thought of this earlier um, with me, you know, with everything is all about balance. Right. And and I, there could be too much of anything. Right. Even good stuff. But a lot of people in, of course, people are there's some uh, commentary. I've, I've read some things online, too, about the balance of um, uh, you don't want, you know, kind of like um you know, free radicals, right? You know, everybody's like, oh, free radicals bad, you know, but they, they're necessary. They're signaling molecules. So you do need some, you don't want to squash them by taking in oxygen. It's 24 seven. And uh, some people are kind of the the flip side of the whole nitric oxide. They say, oh my gosh, too much nitric oxide is bad because if you have, it's it's really supposed to be the backup system, right? You need carbon dioxide to dilate the blood vessels. Uh, nitric oxide is the backup system, right? And then if you have too much nitric oxide, you're going to have some conversion into peroxynitrate which is bad. It's a more of an inflammatory uh, oxidant molecule and that's going to cause damage and make the whole situation worse. So, you know, it's kind of, I've read both uh, on both sides. And for me, it's more about balance, but I'm kind of like, huh, I see the science on this side and I see that I've read the science on both sides. I'm thinking, okay, so who's right? You know, so I wanted to throw, I didn't know if you've read about, heard, read, know much about that whole argument, but love to hear your take on that from the pharmaceutical side. And I do get that question because, you know, I talk with a lot of doctors who say, I don't want nitric oxide coursing through the body 24 seven. Well, and again, a lot of this is an on-demand function for sexual function. You know, the nitric oxide is stored, it's released from the endothelial tissue when you need it. So a lot of this, yes, it's going to have a huge benefit. It can, it can be like anything else. Too much of anything is never going to be a good deal. Right. What we're doing here is basically using a supplement that is replacing the nutrients we would get from a healthy diet. Right. You know, there's a lot of things on the market that are good for you. Hey, testosterone is great for you. It maintains health, maintains virility, maintains cardiac function, cognitive function, excessive testosterone, not necessarily good for you. You start to have problems. You start to have vascular issues, blood flow issues, all the rest of it. So things in moderation, it's important. Our natural levels, that's what we're really trying to maintain. So if we can maintain the nitric oxide level, that would be essentially equivalent to if we were really following a good green diet, mm -hmm. we're not going to get into that realm where, where we're worried about conversion because this is basically just kind of giving the body what it needs to begin with. Right. Right. Well, and using those, you know, as you talked about earlier, using, you know, how do you monitor? Well, those test strips that Berkeley makes, right. I love, I love those. Those are a great way to kind of you know, do a quick check on yourself and see where you're at, you know, so you can kind of balance it out. It's amazing. Uh, like I said, I go into a lot of clinics. One really neat thing is going to medical conferences because mm -hmm. You've been there. You've been sitting in, in a CME where, you know, you're in a conference room for eight or 10 hours and there's basically a PowerPoint up on the screen and somebody's kind of droning on and your last cup of coffee was three hours ago. And all of a sudden the cobwebs start forming. Well, nothing I like better than getting these guys. They, they've been through kind of the first quarter of their session. They'll come out, do their nitric oxide test, give them a couple of capsules and sure enough, they pop back out an hour and a half, two hours later, like, wow, I'm focused again. I'm, I'm alive. This is great. So Things are know, flowing. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. All of a sudden, <laughs> I, I, I can see what's going on again. This is great. So, yeah, there, there's, a, there's so many benefits to it. Um, like I said, we have had a tremendous relationship with Berkeley for going on six years now. We, as I mentioned, tried a lot of different products. I was at a medical conference, a urology conference, and I was actually sitting with the head of urology from Baylor University and, and just brainstorming. 
So we were talking at that time about how we could incorporate the nitric oxide products that were available to us, which again, they were the amino acid products and actually compound them in with PDE5. So you'd kind of have this all in one treatment and man, it lit me up. I thought this is the greatest idea ever. And we just never saw any real return from it. Yeah. You know, it's one thing when you understand it from the scientific level and you say, yes, this should really happen. But I didn't know the details of this whole aging process and the breakdown in the conversion and that what I was doing, theoretically, there was a, a solid basis to it. The problem was I had the wrong components. Mm, yep. so, so much of this has to do with you know using the right product, making sure that, you know, working with a doctor like yourself who understands the, the metabolic functions of this and where the benefits can really be. And then, you know, putting that action, that plan in action. Yeah, no, well said, well said. No, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, it's just all about how you do it. And, you know, there's a lot of tools, but you got to be able to use them properly, you know, for sure. Absolutely. Well, feel free to um, plug any of your sites, anything else you want to mention or throughout the, the websites or any other information you want to give out to our listeners. And um, Sure. So again, as I mentioned, and of course, what we're talking about is the Berkeley Life Nitric Oxide product. Um, you can certainly get this through Berkeley Life. Uh, my home facility is Stanley Specialty Pharmacy. We're based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, we've got a lot of great information on our website, including instructional videos and educational videos about nitric oxide, about the different PDE5s and different medications for, for sexual dysfunction. So that's stanleyrx.com. Um, also, as I mentioned, I am a, uh, a urology, OBGYN, and hormone specialist with Revelation Pharma. Uh, a lot of the same information and even more is available on their website. Um, it's truly a phenomenal facility simply because it's basically pooled some of the best resources from around the country and kind of brought it under, under one umbrella. Um, so, I mean, those, those are both great resources. Uh, if we have any uh, medical professionals on board who are interested in learning more about this, uh, absolutely reach out to me. Um, I'm happy to, to work with anybody on these things. And, you know, <laughs> I spend most of my day talking to practitioners from around the country and uh, helping them build these kind of programs up. Awesome. Awesome. That's excellent. Yeah. And I've had uh, great success work with Berkeley, but yeah, I'll definitely reach out to you myself, see if there's anything else I can tweak in my protocols too. So Absolutely. Um, one last thing, it's, it's a non-medical thing. I always ask all my guests this. I don't know if you, if you're a reader or not, uh, if not just say pass, but if uh, I always like to know what people are reading, uh, non-medical stuff, any, any books or novels, anything that you like to re you're currently reading? Uh, I am not. Uh, I am actually between three different jobs and uh, <laughs> two articles I'm finishing up. And um, I'll tell you one thing that I've, I've <laughs> well, I am reading one thing in particular. This is, this is somewhat off topic, but it was brought to my attention and, and I'm using pretty much any avenue I can to get some knowledge out about it. I was approached by a patient a few days ago um, and introduced to a condition called alpha GAM which is a sensitivity to food products. And it is a secondary allergic response from the bite of a Lone Star tick. Um, it is significant. These people can't eat food products, meat products, dairy products. And from my standpoint, so many medications have hidden allergens. Maybe mm. they're considered inactive ingredients, but in fact, for a lot of people, they're basically microdosing themselves with allergens uh, just on a daily basis. So I am working uh, with a lot of their support groups and we're doing a couple of presentations coming up to kind of broaden the education base so that people do have an understanding. Practitioners like yourself, because they run into so many obstacles where practitioners, either they're not understanding it or they discount the symptoms. So 
that's my own little soapbox for for this week but that's about the most reading i do <laughs> that's awesome no that's interesting and it's scary too because there's you know as you, you obviously you're aware of it's just that you know there's so many things there's so many sensitivities allergens and different reactive reactivities that people have nowadays that you know we didn't have 20 30 years ago and sometimes we know and sometimes we don't know what the heck is going on and so it's kind of it's disturbing and confounding and confusing and frustrating all at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully you guys, uh, that might be helpful to, to figure that out. So you have to keep me in the loop on that one. Absolutely. will. well, thank you for coming on. I appreciate uh, you jumping on and I'll let you get back to your evening. Thank you very much, Greg. Thanks doc. Appreciate you. Absolutely.